Well, the first thing to know is that these are lines and not ropes. When you're on the water and in a fishing boat, we don't call anything a rope. We call it a line. To someone new, this just looks like a big jumbled mess, but eventually you'll learn each purpose for each one of these lines and many of the knots are used for special purposes. Okay, here's the deal. You're gonna watch this video and you're gonna get a little shoestring or a little rope or something. And you're gonna tie these knots and you're gonna be like, I got it. And then it's gonna be a month later and you're gonna show up at fish camp and you're not gonna remember how to do them. So in order to know your knots every time and time right every time, which is a matter of safety and what we are expecting when you show up at camp, you have to tie these knots a lot. And you have to tie them with different size lines and you have to tie them behind your back. So practice, 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 and just know that when you arrive at fish camp, you might be really hungry and you will not be able to eat until you can tie these knots. Okay, good luck. All right, we're gonna talk about how to take care of lines on a boat. And if you ever see a line like this, Feel free to reach in your back pocket and pull out your roll of electrical tape that you will always have in your back pocket. We call it black tape sometimes. And uh, you're gonna take it, put it on this frayed edge, stretching it like that so it's tight. This stuff holds up pretty well in the water in the ocean, so that's why we use it. And then to you don't even have to cut it off. The best thing to do is break it off and that's nice and tight and smooth. And then you're gonna cut your end off. There you go, that's what it should look like. All the lines on the boat should be tightly cut. This thing won't fray for a while. Okay, just kind of for the purposes of teaching you knots, the end of the line that I'm going to be messing around with and tying knots with is going to be called the working end. And then this end that goes way out here, the long end that's going to whatever you're tying to, that's called the running end. So I, I remember that by thinking they're running a long way, the, the, it's running away. So that's the long end. And this is the working end. So we don't really say that too much when we're fishing, but when you're trying to teach someone a knot, it helps out. A lot of times someone will throw you a line and you have to take the working end of it and quickly tie a bowline loop. You may not have time to turn around or get yourself in the perfect position that you're used to for tying a bowline, so I want you to know how to do it quickly right like this. So practice doing it this direction and make sure it looks right when you're done. Uh, be sure to watch my hands and how I do this because this is the fastest way to tie it in this way. So you can get the same knot and the same result, but if you do it how my hands are doing it, that's proven to be one of the faster ways to do this. So sometimes you have to tie a bowline with the loop away from you, and you might be on your stomach hanging out over the bow of the boat trying to grab a loop on a buoy and tying this knot while you're hanging out up, upside down. And you can't like position yourself to get turned around the other way if you're not used to tying a bowl in this direction. And once again, watch my hands. The tricky part about this knot is when you flip the loop so you have to apply tension to one line and have the other line slack in order for that loop to flip the right way. So keep trying it until you get it to look how I'm doing it. Okay, now for the clove hitch. Um, some people do clove hitches over the top of a post. Like if this is a post and then they throw their loops over the top of it like that. But we don't use that method very much at Setnet Camp. So um, we're usually going around things with the clove hitch, so I'm going to go around the back of this chair. So I come around, and then I make an X, and I kind of hold it if I can 
with my with my hand. And then I come around again and I grab the tail and I bring it through the top V of the X. So if this is an X, I'm bringing the running end through the top V, this V. So it should look, you should have one, your, run, your working end going this way, your running end going this way, and then you should have a nice line going there. That's how it should look. So once again, come around, make an X, come around again, and the end goes through here. And then a lot of times, might throw a half hitch over the top. So that's clove hitch. And um, yeah, just keep practicing because there's so many different things you can tie a knot around. So you have to kind of be able to kind of see when you have it right. So keep practicing. We're going to look at a rolling hitch and we use this to tie off a, uh, like a big clothesline so the line won't continue to go out. So there's a lot of different rolling hitches but this is one we use. So you're going to take a small line and tie it to a big line. So this is, this is uh, going to hold pressure one direction. looks like that and it won't let this line go this way but it will let the line go this way and it will slide this way but it won't let it go any further that way let's try it again okay we're gonna do the rolling hitch again you just wind it around the big line uh, for our application, I would say three or four times. And then you're going to go up above your first wrap. And you're going to go around twice. You're not going to do this and then go again. That's not right. You want to go in like this and then come in this way. So it's kind of like the clove hitch in that this line here is going over, this part of the line is going over all your wraps. This long line going a thousand feet out is being held by this tiny line using a rolling hitch. Here it's keeping this green line from going through the block. And here's a fast motion rolling hitch uh, being used on the beach to hold the running line from snaking out. Now we're going to learn a keg knot, and this knot you probably aren't going to ever run across anywhere else in your life besides set net camp. It's, a, it's actually a hitch, and it's, uh, we use it because you can untie it when it's under extreme pressure. Instead of having to cut a line, we can untie this knot. So this, we're going to pretend this loop is on the top of your buoy or your lead line loop, and this is the end of your net. So. And come through here and see how much see how much line I'm leaving on the working end that's because I'm gonna have to tie a lot of half hitches over the knot and if I have it too short I'm gonna have to tie it over again okay that's a keg knot it's not really a knot unless you put some half hitches after it it's it's a hitch so I'm going to put a number of half hitches and you'll notice I'm throwing my loop the same way every time. Okay, so here's the keg knot and then these are all half hitches and that's what we want. At least three, at least three half hitches after it. Okay, so most of the time we're going to use a double keg knot, which basically is easier to untie with great pressure. 
So um, watch carefully here. It's the same thing we did, but a little bit extra. Down through your loop. Okay, there's the keg knot. This is not what we want. We want this, okay? Now we're gonna do the double keg, which just means we're coming around like this and going back through. I don't want it like that. I want it organized. So you have to know what the knot is supposed to look like so when you're done, you can be assured you did it right. So that's a double keg. Uh-oh, looks like I might run out. No, nope, I did it the wrong way. Change directions. See that? So look at your look at your half hitch here. So you can see I came on this side. I came on this side. So I have to follow that with my next half hitch. Okay, so now I've got three half hitches after a double keg. Okay, here's the application for a keg knot. So you can see the corks line in the water. And Owen's going to tie the, the end of the net that's on coming off the cork line to this loop on the buoy. So a buoy floats and corks float. So those are going to be connected. And um, he's going to tie a double keg, which we use in any situation where we've got a lot of, a little bit more pressure than normal. So he's, he's, you can tell he's given it a lot of slack because he knows he has a lot of half hitches to tie. And if he gets all the way to the end and doesn't have enough for his half hitches, he's going to have to start over. And uh, now he's working on the double keg. Bring it around. Everything's organized. Nothing is crossed over in a bad way. And now he's going to do his half hitches. And three half hitches is the minimum. Uh, otherwise, the vibration of the net could take the half hitches out, and if there's no half hitches, it's really not a knot. It's just a hitch, and the half hitches make sure it doesn't snake out of there. And then you use the same double keg knot to attach the lead line. Okay, there you go. There's your knots to learn. I'm really looking forward to you knowing all your knots when you arrive at fish camp. Keep practicing.